qualify. As we move into the second half of the fight. Some of the uh, key moments from round six. Yeah, and that was the, the better moments from ID. And a couple of body shots and some right hands. One right hand in particular when he did straighten it up. But Dan usually came straight back. The next attack, Dan had the better of it. Round seven. So round seven then of 12 scheduled here. That's really where he needs to be, right in close at the heart of the action. But again, Dan finding it easy just to turn his man, push him away, reassert his authority from the centre of the ring again. Yeah, he's just a bit slicker, isn't he? And Aydin really, when you're looking at the broader level of this fight, whether he comes on strong later and manages to get through this one and win it, uh, you know, he, you're seeing a man who's probably reaching his level here. We've certainly we've seen him before here, and we've seen him perform a lot better than we're seeing here now. Now that's about the level of opposition, and he, here he's facing another unbeaten fighter, a man who believes in himself, who believes he can go to the top, not Ideen, and he's worked his plan out, Dan, and he's putting it into execu he's executing it well at the moment. He's putting halfway. in a serious amount of work right here. And Ideen called him in then, but that's frustration. That's yeah, he's not doing anything when he's on the back foot. So why call the man in? Well, for a fighter who thrives on this all-action approach, you're just wondering why we have yet to see any of it. He does that occasionally, walk two steps forward and throw a big right hand. And that was a good right hand. He, he bounced that off the chin of Dan, but nothing happened. Dan just came inside, claimed a little check of the jaw, with his, and, that, and that gets on with it again. Heidi needs a lot of that stuff now. He needs to put pressure on. He needs to shake Dan out of his rhythm. One jab brought a yell of yes from his corner, but you can almost feel their anxiety. There they are. Yeah, um, those are the reactions of people who believe uh, that they are comfortably in control of the situation. They know that they've got a real fight on their hands here, a real scrap. It's going to need more than the occasional punch of Rom Aydin here to turn this around in their favour again. And he threw three huge hooks then, missed with the lot, and then Dan came back with his own. They weren't big punches, they weren't strong, but they were landing. At least 60-70% of them were landing. Aydin blocking those. Well, it was a body shot, and another one. Maybe that's the key. Maybe he can slow Dan down with those. Well, he's got five rounds after this to do it. There's still time to turn this fight back into his favour. This is where he needs him, and this is what he needs to be doing. Goes toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but he's got a man, though, that refuses to be intimidated by either the 10,000 people in this arena or the guy that stood in front of him in the ring. Absolute refusal to be shaken out of the rhythm and to be moved from his game plan. And there, that exchange, well, it wasn't an exchange, was it? It was five punches from Dan, nothing from Aydin. And then the second replay, the one right hand from Aydin that he bounced off the chin of Dan. That was the best punch he threw all, all well, <laughs> since the first round. But nothing happened. Dan took it. Well, that represents a problem for Aydin. The implication is that he can't turn this around with one shot. Second goal. So Chukaidin, remember, this is the man that's ranked number two by the WBC. This is the final eliminator for a world title proper. I wonder whether uh, Galazzo is watching this and thinking, wish I'd taken the fight now. Who knows?
Maybe Andre Berta is watching this. Well, I'm sure at the top level they'll be doing their homework. They'll be having a look at two unbeaten fighters meeting each other in a, what is effectively an eliminator. They'll want to know what they're like. He's at, uh, that was better. That was a better right hand. Everybody up off their feet. You can see around the ringside. Now, that was the best punch he's thrown for a while. And you could see the, the eyes just blinking heavily then. As he was just, uh, for a moment, he looked a little shaken from that punch. But once more, it is just the one. There's nothing following it up, is there? Well, yeah, Dan just, uh, I thought he took a couple, but you know, he, he, we're splitting hairs. The point is, he took them, he came through them. Um, yeah, that, that could have been a moment where Ideen could build on something. Maybe he still will. But certainly, there's another right hand. He keeps looking for it. Good body shot again. For the first time, that for a long time, Dan has just, just disturbed a little bit. Yeah, this is a little better. And there's a bit more negative approach from Dan here. He's playing with the jab and he's keeping on the move as if he's trying to get his head clear a little bit. Certainly looked as if it did need a little clearing up as well after that very heavy right hand. But there again is that rather telegraphed right hand that has to travel such distance. So even when he's hurt, I believe he was there, Dan, he's got enough brains to, to just fiddle his way out of trouble. Not put any great power into what he's doing or the power that he possesses into what he's doing. Not take any risks, get his head clear, mess Ideen about and, and distract him. Well, there is instruction being bellowed in his direction, ID, by every single one of the entourage round ringside. He certainly can't be short on uh, instructions being forwarded his way. I think Dan's he, he's trying to force his way back in this last minute, but it's really been a containing job after getting hurt early on, and ID just yes, bustling his way in here a little bit more. You can see from the, the reaction we, we said earlier that one of the things people have, uh, have actually mentioned about him is the fact that he does tire uh, late, later on in, in fights. So maybe we're just beginning now to see that starting to happen. Certainly that big right hand early in this round had an effect. Good body shot there. This is a good finale to the round from Sir Trick Eidick. Yeah, and he wants to fight on after the bell. That was a bit of gamesmanship, I think. A bit of just something saying, look, I've got you now. I'm in control now. Well, it's still close. I've got Dan one point up, four rounds to go. Pivotal moment, maybe, of this fight. Well, that was the end of the round. That was when the bell had gone and he and John Lewis, I don't know, maybe he expected Ideen to stop or maybe he didn't quite hear the bell in all the noise either. That was the, the body shot that had him again reeling a bit there. Yeah, and that's better pressure. There's nothing too cultured about it. But Ideen more successful. Round 9 of this Schedule 12, and both of these two fighters are used to going long distances. Four of Dan's last five have gone into double figures. And the last five, two went to 12, one went to 9 for uh, Aydin, so they've been here before. It's not new territory. Well, I'm told the scores were announced then after round eight, but it, it had all the noise, you just couldn't hear them. Now Dan looks as if he's recovered a bit, but he's more cautious. The, the confidence has gone out of him after that round eight, where he was stunned by the right hands from ID. ID needs to do a bit more of that. He's got the power to hurt, he's got the power to slow this opponent down. He needs to use it. 
but he's got to channel it properly. There's been too many wild swinging misses in the previous rounds. And there's a bit more holding now from Dan than there was. A uh, scrappy start to this round, nobody having much success. Dan trying to get something going, but no real snap in what he's doing at all. Aydin waiting, rushing when he does attack. Well, that's better from Dan, maybe he's recovering a little bit. But only one attack. But he knows that he, he couldn't afford to stand around and let uh, I didn't get any grabbing in this fight. He's constantly been moving, constantly using his jab. He's only been caught a couple of times in the last few rounds, but when he has been caught, I didn't really hasn't made any real capital out of it. No, I mean, they've done the best for Aydin here. They've given him a tiny ring to operate in against a man who's best on the move as they stand toe-to-toe -to -toe here. Uh, Aydin, that should suit him, but he didn't come off best. Well, one right hand at the end of it. But Dan looks recovered. I mean, they've given Aydin home advantage. 10,000 crowd roaring him on. A tiny ring. It's all in his favour. Well, it shows the level of confidence in his opponent here if, even at this stage, he's prepared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a man who does have more power than he does, more of a record of stoppages and KOs. And he knows what the scores are, as he said, in accordance with the rules after round four and round eight, they've been announced, so... Uh, Dan is going to be aware of the, the situation, even if we're not. The end of the round comes. Well, maybe the expectation has just been too much for Aydin. Maybe it's preyed on him a bit. Well, it was a scrappy round, that one. Uh, Dan just threatened to get through a little bit, take over again, but... Not a lot of clean work.